Filming yourself can take a lot of time because you have to think about several things at once. You alone have to make sure that the shot is in focus, the framing looks good, and you have the right camera settings. The good thing is, in this video you will learn how to make filming yourself a lot easier and more efficient. Whether you want to make a short film, a vlog, or just a cool video of yourself to show family and friends, these techniques will work. The first step is to plan your video so that you know what you're gonna film. Not only will this help you make better videos, but also it will save you a ton of time. I like to first come up with a rough idea for the video and then I choose the right song for the video. All of the music in this video are from Track Club, which is the sponsor of this video. More about Track Club later. Having a song in mind early on will help you come up with better ideas for the story of the video. After choosing the right song, I always write a specific shot list so that I know exactly what I'm gonna film. For this video, I'll keep it very simple and I won't go very deep into the story of the video, but simply explain your story should have some kind of a hook in the beginning and some kind of a struggle that the character might be going through in the middle and some kind of a payoff at the end. If that sounds too daunting, don't worry. Just keep it simple and make sure that your video has a beginning, a middle and an ending. Use the right gear. Now let me say this, the best gear is what you already have. If you don't have a camera, just use your smartphone. The cameras on smartphones these days are incredibly good and that's all you need to get started. A good video filmed with a low quality $300 camera is still a good video, but a terrible video filmed with an $8,000 professional camera is still a terrible video. That being said, if you can afford it for filming yourself, I recommend a mirrorless camera that has a flip out screen and a good autofocus. Having a flip out screen is so, so helpful because it allows you to actually see yourself and the framing and having a good autofocus will make sure that you're staying in focus even if you're moving in the frame. If your camera doesn't have a flip out screen, you can also use an external monitor which you can attach on top of the camera. I also recommend investing in a high quality but affordable travel tripod that's good for run and gun situations and getting a good shotgun microphone. Use the right camera settings. I film my videos in 4K which is the highest resolution that most cameras have these days. And filming in 4K is important because it allows me to crop in in the editing process and reframe my shots if needed. I film everything in 25 frames per second because I'm in Europe, which is in the PAL region. But if you're, for example, in the US or Canada, you're in the NTSC region. So that means that you should film in 24 frames per second. Your shutter speed should always be double the frame rate, in this case 1 50th of a second because that gives you the most natural looking motion blur which we've used to seeing in Hollywood movies. Be creative. Just because you're filming yourself, it doesn't mean that you can be lazy. The viewer only cares whether or not the video is engaging or not. Use a variety of different kind of shots and think outside of the box about those kind of shots that will take the audience by surprise and keep them interested. The reason why I wanted the first shot to be an extreme close-up was that it doesn't reveal too much, which leads to more questions in the mind of the viewer and keeps the viewer interested and wanting to learn what's gonna happen next. 
with the flip out screen, I could easily see myself and the framing. And because of the great autofocus, I was able to keep the autofocus locked on my eye the entire time, even though I was moving. This shot with the washing machine, I came up when I thought about a creative shot that would look cool, take the audience by surprise, but still make sense with the storyline and the story I'm trying to tell. I used my Joby Gorilla Pod, put the camera inside, made sure the shot was level and the framing was good, and I zoomed out all the way to a wide 11 millimeter focal length because it is quite a tight space, so you want as wide of an angle as possible. I also needed a simple shot of the washing machine washing the clothes. If this looks confusing to you, don't worry. Essentially, everything that's red means that it's in focus. So I intentionally set the aperture to f7.1 because I wanted a wide depth of field and I wanted a wide establishing shot of the location, which is our apartment. For the story that I'm trying to tell in this cinematic video, I wanted as much of these shots as possible where the character feels and looks bored or impatient. The reason of this shot where the character is hanging out the laundry is to show the passing of time. I wanted another shot of the character impatiently waiting for something and for this shot, I used very intentionally the rule of thirds to place the character in the frame. And I put the camera very close to myself and set the aperture to a wide f2.8 to get that nice blurry background, but still have the clock visible in the background. In this shot, the camera was a little bit too far for me to see the flip out screen. So what I did was I used the pillow as a reference point to where my head was gonna be. And I used that to frame the shot. And then I let the autofocus do the rest cause I just knew that the autofocus is so good that it will track my face. I filmed this shot with manual focus, even though I realized afterwards that I could have filmed it with autofocus and just get it nailed with the first try. I could have filmed this shot the traditional way, but instead I wanted to break the pattern of what the viewer was probably expecting to see by putting the camera inside the bag, pointing upwards directly to my face. Using autofocus for this shot was definitely the right way to go, but the challenge was that in some attempts, the autofocus focused on my face too slowly. But after a few tries, I got it close enough. In this shot, I wanted to use manual focus because I wanted to do anything I can to avoid focus breathing, meaning that the focus would go all over the place. The last two shots of the cinematic video were the exact same shot, filmed twice but from a different angle so that I could intercut them in the editing process. Now, let me show you how to edit the cinematic video. I've actually already edited the video, so I'll show you a breakdown of how I edited that video. Let's begin by watching the entire cinematic video with the timeline. First, let's talk about the music. The reason why choosing the right song is so important is that music and audio 
is at least half of the viewing experience. When you choose the right kind of music, it will significantly enhance the emotional impact of your film or video. For the first track, I wanted the mood support the character feeling impatient because he's waiting for something. The second track I would describe with two words, relaxed and harmony. The character feels great because he finally got his ice cream delivery. To get all of the music for this entire tutorial, I went to Track Club's website and I added all of the best songs into my favorites list. And out of that list, I selected the ones that I liked the most or the ones that felt like they would best fit this video. One thing that I noticed about Track Club quickly was that their music is actually very, very high quality. Something that you'd actually listen to because it's made by real artists and doesn't sound like generic stock music at all. But what really makes Track Club unique is a feature called MixLab. MixLab opens every single stamp used for the production of the song and allows you to freely customize it. For example, maybe you want to get rid of the vocals. No problem, just click M. Or maybe you want to increase the volume of the drums. Done. Maybe you want to increase the volume of the guitar stems. No problem. Or maybe the song is just too slow for you. So you can just increase the BPM by clicking here. And you can of course download your own personal mix, the original song, or all individual stems. I'm gonna download my own mix. With Track Club's Track ID, you will get automatic clearance for the songs that you're using, which means that you don't have to worry about any copyright strikes. All you have to do is to go to your profile and add your channel ID, and Track Club will take care of the rest. Get a one month free trial for Track Club by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you Track Club for sponsoring this video. In this first shot, I cropped in quite a bit because I wanted even more of a close-up shot because I wanted to draw the viewer's attention to my eye. The reason why I put this extra close-up shot at the very beginning of the video was that I didn't want to reveal too much to the audience too soon. That way, it will raise questions in the viewer's mind and make the viewer curious and want to watch more. <sighs> what I did here is called a J-cut. Essentially, a J-cut is a transition leading to the next scene with the audio. That means that the audio of the next clip starts before the video. This makes the transition to the following shot a lot more smooth and it also helps with the pacing of the video. Here we have another J cut but this time it's a lot more obvious because the audio of the following clip starts way before the video. Here we have something that's very similar to the J cut but flipped. It's called an L cut, meaning that the previous video clip ends and the following video clip starts, but the audio of the previous video clip continues underneath the following video clip. One thing that you will notice is that I cut every single shot to the beat of the music. This way, it makes the video flow a lot smoother forwards. And that way, the edit doesn't feel jarring. Here, I added a constant power transition to the music track to make the music slowly fade away and I intentionally wanted there to be a brief moment without any music to accentuate the sound of the doorbell but also to do a pattern interruption to grab the viewer's attention again.
So after the doorbell sound, there's a very quick fade in transition to the new music track, which has a totally different tone to the previous music track. The new track clearly conveys the feeling and the emotion of excitement that the character is having. Here, if you look at the shot where I'm putting my hand inside the bag, and then look at the shot where I'm opening the ice cream, it's kind of a match cut because the movement of the hand and the placement of the hand on the frame is kind of the same. So the previous shot kind of moves smoothly towards the next shot, so there's a smooth transition. Here we have something that's called cutting to the action. If you look at the spoon in the close-up shot, and then you look at the spoon in the wider shot, you can clearly see that in the close-up shot where the spoon ends with the movement, it continues from the same spot in the wider shot. So it's a continuous action from one shot to another. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about how to film yourself, then I highly recommend watching this video over here. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you. why am I shouting? Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care.